I was worried that I, if I did come out, if I did transition, I wouldn't be able to do my job, that my gender would become the story. I think I always wanted to be a journalist from when I was a kid, and so I've been working to that since I was in junior high and high school. These days, I'm chief technology correspondent for Axios. I write our daily tech newsletter login, and I also do interviews uh, on stage for Axios events and for our new Axios on HBO show. I knew that I was trans, or I figured out that I was trans early in college. I was a sophomore in college. Um, but it took me a long time to figure out what I was going to do with that, how I was going to integrate that into um, my life, my career. Um, so I've been out, at least with my friends, since, since I was a, uh, a sophomore in college. Um, but I didn't transition at work till, you know, several years later. My big concern about transitioning at work wasn't so much that they would fire me. I was at CNET at the time, pretty progressive. I was worried that I, if I did come out, if I did transition, I wouldn't be able to do my job, that my gender would become the story. And I didn't have a lot of examples to look to of journalists who'd publicly transitioned in mainstream journalism. So I kind of came out with a roadmap. I'm gonna come out first to the newsroom, then a couple weeks later, I'm gonna come out to my sources and say, I'm transitioning on this date. Um, and that's pretty much what I did. Um, it ended up being a really bonding moment um, for the companies that I covered, for the sources that I worked with. So I think one being in San Francisco, um, it was less uh, unusual. And being in tech, there, there were trans people in tech. Um, you know, everyone sort of in tech, you know, knew someone or there was somebody at their company. Um, so that helped. I think, uh, you know, when I first started, I felt personally supported, but, you know, trans-inclusive health benefits, a trans-inclusive employment uh, policies weren't the norm. Now they are, or at least they're becoming the norm. And so, you know, I've pushed at companies that I've worked for to make sure we are covering as much as we can um, trans-related healthcare, that we have non-discrimination policies to the point, you know, at Axios where we're actively recruiting diverse employees, including around gender identity and sexual orientation. So I think there's now a lot more transgender journalists, which is great. I hope that I showed that it was possible, um, that, you know, provided sort of a roadmap that maybe I didn't quite see when I was transitioning of how it might take place. I think also what we're starting to see, which is awesome and amazing, is journalists who've transitioned before they start their career, um, which is awesome. So we have young trans journalists who transitioned in college, in high school, in junior high, in elementary school, coming up who um, are having a really different experience, and that's awesome also. I think overall, um, journalism is not very represented by LGBTQ people, and especially um, trans journalists, and that matters for a bunch of reasons. It matters because young trans people don't often see someone like themselves in the media. It matters because I think I've seen firsthand that when there's a trans person in the newsroom, or even better, more than one, issues get covered that weren't being covered. I think a lot of people still feel like being a uh, lesbian or bi or trans or non-binary is a hurdle between them and their career goals. I think to be patient with themselves is what I tell anyone uh, who's coming out as trans or anything else, that it's, it's hard internally. You can do it. <laughs> um, it matters. I think it really does matter. I really think of that next generation of trans youth that's consuming media, that's watching TV, I think it's really important that they see journalists and technologists and athletes uh, that look like them. I think that matters a tremendous amount. 